staying in the game. How do you make ends meet staying in music? And somebody who's done this extremely well is Tank. If y'all don't know Tank, he's an R&B artist. He popped in the late 90s, early 2000s. Might have been early 2000s, definitely. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe I Deserve was, was the song that set the world aflame and had a lot of men angry at the time. Um, I wasn't old enough to have I deserve energy. Yeah, to, to deserve the I deserve energy. <laughs> so I didn't feel that same pain. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't have any trials, tribulations, <laughs> or wrongdoings that I, I, I deserve the karma that he's speaking of. But with that being said, he's been a writer for so many songs. He's been a backup singer for so many songs. And I've always actually loved this about Tank because it's the lack of ego that it seems that he has. And when you talk about loving this shit, he's somebody, when I see him, the way he talks about R&B, he loves that shit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of artists say, oh, I love music. I just want to be able to do music and I'll be happy. He's somebody I actually believe that shit when I see him talk about it. And specifically, especially R&B. So why are we talking about him? Um, A lot of people didn't know that he wrote uh, Marcus Houston's song Naked and he did some background vocals vocals on that song Omarion's O which makes so much sense actually it's very very tankish when I think about it in so many, so many ways but apparently he wrote that and he's on the background of that I've actually seen him talk about this in um, Aaliyah's I mean I didn't see him talk about this in an interview that he was the background vocals for Aaliyah's song which is crazy because I always thought it was Aaliyah and it did sound like a woman until I found out it was Tank. He was like, oh, yeah, that is Tank. Right? But you just assume because it's Aaliyah. Now, this I could play. I'm not playing the other songs, people, just because of copyrights, but this is just him singing, so I could play this. So, yeah, for y'all who might recognize this Aaliyah song. And that's probably my fam- my most famous vocal <laughs> that, I've, that I've ever laid. It's like, oh, just sing that. Oh, and. That's probably my fam- my most famous vocal <laughs> that, I've, that I've ever laid. It's crazy. I did think there was a woman singing that. See? That part. Yeah, that was one. <laughs> right? All right. But well, he's just been in the game for so long. He actually came up as a background singer. So that was something he did early on. He was Genuine's backup singer before he was a big artist. Mm-hmm. Right? One of those guys. So that might speak to what the the lack of ego. Um, he wrote Jerry Fox, Do What It Do, which is one of my favorite songs when I was too young, but that probably to be one of my favorite songs. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you wanna see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you wanna check it out, go to brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Because JR gets into the details of looking at the data, decisions that got made, how much content got created, and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign. This is real behind the curtains type of stuff. So again, go to brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy if you want to check this out and apply it to yourself. Back to the video. But again, just back to the point, like all these different songs and someone who's had his own upfront career. Mm -hmm. But then also being able to play the back and be comfortable just to be around the music, to be in a group. He did the TGT thing with Tyrese and Genuine. Um, he's wrote a lot of songs. I've seen him be somebody who just helps a lot of young artists. You'll hear a lot of sto- stories about that. Jamie Foxx is one of those dudes, too. Like you, bro, you'll hear like all these random artists and people will be like, oh, yeah, uh, Jamie Foxx like, took me in. I used to sleep at his house. Man, like, take himself, actually. Said he was about to go back. I think he's from Virginia or DC area, somewhere over there on the East Coast, right? He was about to go back because it was really rough in LA um, and things weren't going like he wanted to, um, them to go. And Jamie Foxx was like, Yo, man, where you going? You can't go back. He's like, What am I going to do if you're gone? We need you. Your talent, like, you're right. The way you write, man, like, you inspire me. So he brought him in and it was just like, Yo, bro, stay with me. Like, go figure it out. 
right? And when you see people that move like Jamie in the stories um, that are around him, see people that move like Tank and the people that are around him, you could tell that for real, again, they just love it. And there is a lot of ways, if you love it, that you can figure out how to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, man, it's a big testament to it is just how much longer you can keep yourself in the game if you aren't afraid to take yourself out the spotlight and help yeah. people out. You know what I mean? Exactly. There's lots of artists, man, where I think service level, it always looks like, like they are the reason their career is going so strong, which, you know, it, it is in a sense. Like, it's your work ethic. You right. made these choices, but... The real reason they're they're still so successful and moving so much is because of exactly that. How I'm in the back end making moves that uh-huh. my audience might not even know about for another 10, 20 years. You know what I'm saying? But yep. but this artist that, you know, now goes on to become something or become somebody and never forgets I did that and that they're willing to still help put me in certain positions or help me do certain things and maybe even move my career forward, you know, as a front facing artist. So yep. like yeah, I think like it's such a wild artist mentality but i've heard a lot of artists say things like that like they would never help other artists do certain things or work on them with stuff and it's like nah bro you you open so many more doors and you become less competitive that's another big thing artists are competitive bro yeah so sometimes you as an artist may not get help from another artist because they're looking at you as competition but if you can find a very you know low risk way to move yourself in there or that shows like hey like yeah maybe i'm competition over here but within this realm, I can be of use to you. You know what I'm saying? I can help you do X, Y, Z thing better. That's going to, unfortunately, open up a lot more doors than you a lot of the time. You know? Yeah. Because um, yeah. there are doors, artists, that you guys are, are getting shut to you guys that are getting shut because you're artists and you just don't realize it because you're artists. You know what I'm saying? But they're like, oh, you're another artist? Nah, dead. See, but then you got to have that talent, too. Because that's true. Seeing yeah. Tank also brag about being a 100%er where he can write, produce, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, sing before well you know all that he could do all that himself be in the studio come back out with a full track and that thing is ready to go yeah right everybody doesn't have those multiple talents but if you do i mean one it's to your own benefit to like, have multiple talents and a more holistic view of the track but if you do you know don't keep it to yourself in my opinion right now of course personally you could just keep it all to yourself great but i feel like if you really love music, you would just want to be around it. It doesn't mean you have to disown your own career. But like, if you think about people who play instruments, it's like, all right, I might not be the one singing at the moment, but I just love playing because I love music, performing, being involved in it, jamming. I've seen Bruno Mars. This is how I knew he used to be big. Like A lot of people think, oh, man, this dude is like culture vulturing or like doing the stuff he's doing now just to pop. Right, because he's doing more like old school, old to, I mean, you know, I don't even know the years, like what, 70s, 50s yeah. to 70s, like music a lot of times. So he play with 80s too, right? But I saw Bruno Mars back in 2010, 11, 12, where he was beautiful girls. He was that guy, mm-hmm. right? And what else did he have that was more him? Because beautiful girls was happy. Grenade. Yeah. That was yeah. He was that guy, right? So a little bit past just being beautiful girls, but like that was all so close together, right? He was that guy. But then I would go on YouTube, and I became a fan of him because I was just on YouTube, and I randomly came across like this commercial with him, and he was like singing his ass off, and he was playing piano, and it was like this. It was funny the way he did it, and he sang in like an old school style. Styles. So I was like, oh man, this dude could really sing. And then I would see performances with him backstage, not on front of the stage, just backstage where him and his friends would be like freestyling, whether it was freestyle rapping or freestyling, like playing with some of those old songs and notes and doing that. Like all the stuff he's doing now, like he was already doing it just for fun. And he brought the back behind the scenes in front of the scenes. Even if you looked at his concerts early on, he would be um, like, he would always have, like his friends and it'll be like a good time, like his band and they would like have this relationship. It wouldn't be like my backup dancers are there and I don't see them and they're just a part of like the aesthetic. It would be like this, this banter back and forth. Like they were like homies, that's what it always felt like. And then they would interact with the crowd. It almost felt like skits. So the fun that Bruno Mars emanated on 24 Karat Magic, you know what I mean? 
what was it technically called 24k golden like y'all know what i mean though right <laughs> like but that fun and that energy he started to emanate and start popping for it. since then it was already something he was doing mm. and it was just somebody who loved the game but you know this guy was also an elvis impersonator at like four years old <laughs> you know what i'm saying so you when you watch long enough it's interesting because you can always tell those people who are just like oh no, they love it love it and then you can see how other artists treat them too because bruno wrote um the shit for for CeeLo. the uh not crazy oh uh, fuck you fuck you oh shit i know that. yeah he was he was part of that he uh bruno's wrote a lot of stuff he's one of those guys that just be they just love it you know what i'm saying <laughs> and they they write and and it kind of just is what it is. So th- those people always intrigue me. And it's even more intriguing when they also find individual success. Because there's a lot of songwriters and people behind the scenes who are just a- around it and love it and whatever. But the people who get their own stardom and they're still doing that shit, it's like it just seems like an extra level of like, damn, you really, you really like breathe this shit, bro. Yeah, you know, and I, mean, I too think you know, because like I said, he pays attention to a lot of old school artists. Yeah, and that was a big part of the old school artist blueprint. We're like, let's be involved in everything, and collaborative. Yeah, yeah, collaborative. Yeah, so I'm gonna go write my own stuff, and then when I get done with my session, I'm gonna go play guitars over here. I'm gonna go play drums over here. I'm gonna help this yep artist with this song writing because you know the more stories you get to be a part of, the, the more shots the kind of shot that you know. Like I said, like how many of these songwriters that are popular as artists do we know they got their start by giving their, a big song to another artist first you know what I'm saying yeah. and that situation was even the reason that we cared about them or knew about them or maybe it gave them the resources to be able to chase their own dreams as an artist right um so yeah a lot of doors open up when you don't close yourself off to working with other artists even if it's sometimes maybe against like the the competitive nature in you as an artist you know what I'm saying like sometimes you you have to do it because we as consumers are looking for that like I, I think it's cool as a fan to see you know, other things that my favorite artists have worked on. He's like, damn, like you said, like, man, I like this. I didn't know Tank was on that. He was on, you know what i that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Made me like him a little bit more. Like, yeah. man, the, the, he was willing to go bang out, get some some pub credits for his little joint. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't know how much he getting paid for that, how many dollars he makes every time that home comes on. But who knows how his pockets or his business situation or even his credibility as an artist today would look if he had never decided to do that, you know? Yeah. So it was a good long-term investment, no matter how it felt in the moment. You know, I'm assuming it felt good because he chose to do it, but long term it was a good investment because of who she became you know what i'm saying and like yeah. and what kind of came from that so it stacks up yeah. creates your legend yeah it's like um pharrell he's actually one of those guys yeah too. yeah he's like that he's one of those guys you can tell he love it being a part of everything yeah he's been a front man but he's still just comfortable and building other people up and doing songs and i thought about him because you talk about those kind of stories it was like when he came out he didn't come out um people reveal uh, it was like some random like viral post that he was the guy on the S- S- uh, WB joint. Oh yeah, I did see that, yeah. I was like, dang, and it's such a small thing. Yeah. That's the double, <laughs> the V, and that's it. But it's like, oh shit, that's for real? And now that's like really cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That yeah. adds to the legend that you did literally, you just said three letters and that was it. Mm. And look at the impact that shit made for them. True. <laughs> exactly. That on a whole other level. So now it just looks like, dang, right? Look at how many great moments he's a part of. Mm-hmm. Even though you only had a little, I mean, I don't know, he might have technically been, uh, been a producer on that too or whatever. I don't know. I know you came up on the t- Teddy Riley and stuff, but like, even if it was literally, he just said that one thing. It's just like, yeah, again, look at how much great shit you've been a part of. Mm-hmm. And then you start to get credit because then it doesn't feel like a coincidence. It's like, dang, the energy must just be right when he's around or something. Mm-hmm. All right, so I, I'll be will, be willing to give it up. And I just, I know we're in an age where it's harder to collaborate because people are creating music in their own. We're not forced to be in a studio where you're around people and everything. But I, I don't know. I, I definitely encourage people to figure out how they can, like, just share, you know what I mean, and and collaborate because so much comes from it anyway. Like the the experience, the stories, mm-hmm. the little shit you pick up from how other people are doing stuff anyway that you can add to your game. So you got another move in the, in, the, in the chamber. There's a lot of stuff that comes from it, but um, you know, I, I found that to be an inspiring post in general, just talking about the moments that he's been a part of. And, you know, I just, 
is why I like to talk to people who are doing dope shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like someone reach out to you or whatever and like they're really dopey, believe in them. Like, oh man, I don't gotta be involved in the business. It's like I just really believe in this shit and then something come of it, you know, it was just another cool moment I was a part of. Yeah, but there are a lot of people in the music industry who live life like that. Literally. Yeah. But it's like, those people are interesting. No. <laughs> <laughs> those are some interesting people. <laughs> Damn, I was on a jet with Drake and like Travis Scott dropped this book bag and I was like, bro, you know, I make book bag straps and he's like, he invested 50 million in my, you're like, what? <laughs> those, those stories are out there, bro. And those, <laughs> those sometimes those stories be having you punch air for real. Yeah, bro, I'm like, damn, man, why was I, why, why did I think of book bag straps? Everybody got a book bag. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to 